Pistons and then also. Uh, well, so we're now in the segment I like to call the non-hockey segment where I ask you some non-hockey questions to get to know you and your team a little bit more off the ice. Uh, first one is, uh, what is your most embarrassing hockey moment? I guess it's not really a non-hockey question, but it could be. My most embarrassing hockey moment. This, I, this actually, I don't know the answer to this one. Never I, been, you've yeah. never been checked before, never gotten your ankles broken? Oh, of course. Numerous times. I think that one of the most embarrassing hockey moments. Well, I think that <laughs> besides from like getting absolutely, yeah, dangle and stuff, but I think that in um, Pensley, my first year at Pensley, since we have yellow helmets, um, we didn't, my family didn't know if I was going to play for them for two or three or four more years. So, my dad and brother took a black helmet and spray painted it yellow. So the first couple of weeks at Pensley, I played with a spray painted helmet. I think that's beyond embarrassing rather than just getting a normal yellow Bauer helmet. I played with the spray painted one and I think that was quite embarrassing. Did it chip off at all or did it look like, yeah. look, 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 oh, <laughs> it was, it was horrendous. Yeah. That's tough. Uh, I remember hearing a spray tan story about someone who wanted to look tan before going to california so you got a spray tan and then it started like just when you sweat it starts like coming off and like everyone was yelling at him it was the funniest story ever i forgot where i heard it but that's probably the worst spray tan story i ever heard if that makes you feel any better yeah um my i don't really i've always say this in the pod but just um someone forgot to close the bench door and i fell inside when we we're doing backward skating drills um back in <laughs> back in youth hockey so that's probably my most embarrassing one he just fell back through the door. I wasn't paying attention because I was trying to go so hard to impress the coach because it was like one of our first practices and the goalie forgot to close the door and I was just like pff, fell in and it was like <laughs> just took me by surprise and like I hopped right up. So, but that was definitely tough. I tried to make it seem like that never happened, even though it did. Goalies. Yeah. That's why they're the weirdest on the team. That's exactly why. It's just <laughs> goalies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what music do you like to listen to? I I love country music. I absolutely love country music. So that's when when we went to Nashville, it was just the history of country music was right in front of me. Um, but as well as pop. Um, so this summer I went to a Zach Bryan concert, and I'll be going to Morgan Wallen in September. So I absolutely love country music. Yes. Yeah, I've been a huge Morgan Wallen guy for the last year. I know I've sort of hopped on the bandwagon, but that new album is fantastic. I love the song Tennessee Fan. I was yeah. listening to today on my way home so shout out to him he's definitely not gonna listen to this but i like his music a lot <laughs> you never know but yeah uh, <laughs> i think his last album is phenomenal i agree sorry if there's background noise sorry no it's all good don't worry about it now let's get to the style question um who has the best off the ice style on the princeton women's hockey team jane kuehl i think that's Jane, her style is through the roof. You walk into her closet and it's just phenomenal. And each game day outfit she plans. I think that also Mariah Keppel was absolutely amazing. But those two, yeah, it's it's pretty difficult to compete with them. I think that everything had to be perfect. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the top 10 um, styles of the year, but I'm pretty sure she was number two or three. So, And I thought yeah. she had the best um uh nashville fit with the with the cowboy hat and then the orange pants with the i thought that was super cool absolutely that's that's why jane should have been yeah she absolutely had to be there yes her nashville outfits were phenomenal so is it just her and her sister ever have competitions though who can show up to the rink the best because <laughs> annie's up there too i think she was on the top 10 list as well so annie has wonderful style as well i think that the both of them have a great style uh I think there has to be internal sister <laughs> competition. It's I just, know they probably won't admit it, but like it has to be. <laughs> there has to be. I mean, they're sisters. They play for the same team. There has to be. There's always internal between siblings, <laughs> internal competition. Now, who's the funniest on the team? The funniest would be. I think that. Funniest would be probably our, our goalie, Jen. Jen is quite, she's so funny. Her personality, she can crack a joke at any time. Uh, her stories in the locker room are unforgettable. So I would say, yeah, our goalie is probably the funniest on the team. Oh, uh, if you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? 
I would probably do Neil Armstrong. I think that he was being the first person on the moon. I think that's so special to hear about his experience on the moon and like being the first one in space exploration. That's something I am quite interested in. So having the ability to talk to him about his, why he wanted to do that and how he trained for that, it would be something very special. Uh, for me, probably Tom Brady. Um, Tom Brady. Yeah, I think that'll be super fun just hearing how he sort of went from sort of an unknown prospect to becoming one of the best football players of all time. That would be a lot of fun to hear his sort of perspective on his come up and all that and sort of the adversity he went through. And what advice and like inspiration he would give. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe he could invite me to that Hamptons party that he was just at last week. Um, I'm just saying, Tom, if you're listening, I would love to have a conversation. With you <laughs> Where are that. other people's invites? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seemed quite exclusive. Oh, I yeah. Think. I think you had to be an A-lister at least to get in there. But there were some basketball players. I'm like, how did you get in there, if I'm being there, honest? Yeah. <laughs> there were some social media people that just I do not think are A-list. Well, speaking of uh, that party, what's the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week? Interesting thing I've read or seen this week. I think read i'm I'm interested in science so i was reading the news and i read about um how they're trying to convert energy from like the sun and, and translate it to microwaves um i do not remember the exact specifics but i think that could change um the future of um of renewable energy so that was something that was very interesting well, they figure that out because on 4th of July, it was the hottest day on earth in like 120 something thousand years. Um, so it's really? definitely, oh yeah, I, I I saw it somewhere. I don't know if it was true or not, but it's definitely something that we need to start being concerned about in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that like scientific innovation is quite fascinating personally. So hopefully they do that because it is quite hot and I would want more snow in the winters. Same, same. Uh, for my most interesting thing, I saw something where Facebook created a new version of Twitter called Threads and how it's trying to compete with Twitter just because people are sort of being tired with Twitter uh, because of some of the new policies and how it's been structured. And I'm pretty interested to see like how it's going to do against Twitter and um, if Twitter can be overtaking because it's obviously been one of the more staple social media apps in the last decade. And I'm just curious to see because um, Instagram has, or Facebook has done it with Instagram and Snapchat sort of buying it out. I'm curious if they'll do it with Twitter as well and sort of have a own all the social media apps that people use. Well, did you hear about like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk potential boxing match? I did. I feel like Musk is sort of playing that up to get attention. I don't think it's actually going to happen. But if it did, I would totally watch. And because I think Zuck's actually a good fighter from what I've seen on YouTube. I think he actually, yeah, he actually does. I think he would win. Mm -hmm. Um, Could be. Yeah, I, I think it's for publicity, as but it could be Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, we'll see. But I just thought that was pretty interesting. And uh, that is, I, absolutely. I think when more, if more like higher profile people join that app and start using it more, that's sort of when it's going to turn to become more mainstream, in my opinion. What's it called? Threads? Yes. Threads. We'll it's, see in the in I'm not going to get until it becomes mainstream because I, I hop on those bandwagons all the time. I did it. I've done it with every social media that's ever existed. So we'll see what happens. That's sort of, I always wait and see until I decide to join. Not going to set the path for threads. No, no, no. It took me a while to join um, like Instagram and uh, TikTok. So um, it'll probably take me a while to join threads at some point. We'll see how popular it gets. Yeah. That's interesting to continue to look at. Now, getting back to some hockey questions now, uh, what should be done to help grow women's hockey from your perspective? I, from my perspective, I think that more female coaches who inspire young girls, I think their speeches are very crucial. And I think that their exposure to young girl athletes are very important because growing up, I was only um, exposed to male coaches I didn't I personally didn't even know that there was like a female side of hockey all I did was just enjoy the sport and play with boys because there were no girls teams around but except one but um, it wasn't as strong so I think that seeing those older players and older 
coaches and their experiences and that there is um an outside that there is a big future in female sports is very important to grow the game now for all these younger players that are listening what advice would you give them on what it takes to be a college hockey player like yourself i think the most important advice is to take through your career you have many coaches and i think it's important to take something from each coach each coach will have their own in his or her own impact on you they could have this little tweak to your game but even from one practice or meeting a different coach i think that it's important to grab one aspect and just add it to your toolkit and that in the future will help you because players probably can't count how many coaches they've had but once you learn one little thing from them it will all add up and benefit you as a player well, any shout outs you want to give to any of your teammates, family members, or friends, and who should we have on the podcast next? It could be someone that we've already had on as well. Hmm. I don't have any specific shout outs. I think that it takes a village to like make a hockey player. And I think that ranging from all my coaches, my family, uh, a special shout out would probably be to my dad, who's absolutely been done above and beyond for my career. Um, I think that takes a village. So to everyone that has impacted me, but I think, hmm, who would be next on the podcast? Does it have to be from someone from Princeton? Or it could be anybody that you know. I think that it would be interesting. I played with her for several years, Lainey Potter. Mm-hmm. She plays, She's going to be a freshman at Wisconsin. I think that would be very interesting to listen to Lainey's story. And she's a great person. So yeah, her. Awesome. Well, Thank you so much, Catherine, for coming on the podcast. How do you say that in Russian? Спасибо за то, что ты пришла на подкаст. I probably, I don't know how to say that, so I, I won't it? repeat it. I, I do get it a little bit. I got the podcast part, but it's definitely, I would love to learn different languages. So at some point, I feel like I got to gotta work, get on that a little bit. But thank you so much, though, Catherine, though, for coming on the pod. I appreciate your time. It means so much to myself. And I wish you nothing but the best uh, for your future endeavors. And Good luck in the math class. I know you're going to do great, but I appreciate your time. It means a lot to myself. Great player, great person. And uh, we definitely got to meet up after a game sometime. That would be absolutely wonderful. Thank you. I definitely need luck in summer math. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is very needed. Thank you for having me. It was absolutely a pleasure to be on. I've always seen the videos and I am so grateful to be on. Um, finally get to meet you and your story and i'm so happy that you're an ovechkin fan it's it it warms my heart it just absolutely does yeah uh i would say though i'm more of a bruins fan than ovechkin fan so but it it sort of intertwines a little bit (laughs) we couldn't leave it at ovechkin fan (laughs) fine hey the bruins and caps have won the same amount of cups in the last 10 years so i feel like it it evens itself out a little bit (laughs) hopefully the caps beat the bruins and have more Hopefully the Bruins don't face the Capitals at all and the Bruins will find a way to win the cup. That's sort of, it was supposed to happen last year and it didn't. So I'm not going to wish, I'm just, if it happens again, I just hope we have a sort of, uh, sort of a, I don't know what it's called. They go on a run and they somehow win it next year. That's sort of what I'm hoping for. I'm going to hope the same for my team. You can hope the same for the Bruins. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But thanks for coming on though. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely.